Welcome back. In this morning's top political play story, Senator Chuck Schumer urged Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to call an emergency session addressing gun safety. This is in response to the weekend's two mass shootings. He says taking action on the bipartisan bill passed by House Representatives in February will close some <coughs> loopholes. The legislation would enact universal background checks on all gun purchases. Also, 20 eager presidential hopefuls appeared at Detroit's Fox Theater at the end of July for a Democratic debate. Debate, but for the next debate at Texas Southern University in Houston in September, more requirements are hoping to chop down that number. That includes at least 2% support in four polls and contributions from at least 130,000 individual donors. So far, only eight candidates have qualified. That includes former Vice President Joe Biden, Senator Elizabeth Warren, and Senator Cory Booker. Before we get to that, let's check in with our political plays experts. We have uh, Bill Vickery and we also have Michael Cook. Thanks guys for joining us this Monday morning. morning. Let's get to gun safety here. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell calling an emergency session to address gun safety. This happens every time we see something tragic, you know. What needs to be done? Where is it lacking? Where is it needed? Or do we need more? I'll let uh, it's, it's long overdue. Uh, you know, a couple examples. One, there is a need for universal background checks. There is a need mm -hmm. to, to close some of the loopholes from gun sales and private sales. But there's also a need to take a serious look at the banning of certain magazines. The uh, the man who, sh who killed nine people in Dayton, Ohio, he had a, a hundred round drum and literally in 30 seconds he was able to shoot about 36 people, killing nine of them. Uh, that is just horrific. You don't need that kind of firepower. Uh, unfortunately, I, I would just say I'm the pessimist on what's going to happen. I mean, legislation will pass the Democratic House and then die in the Republican Senate. Uh, for me, this, this whole issue of gun safety, I knew it died when a few years ago a crazy man walked into elementary school and shot five-year-olds in the head. And we did nothing. We, yeah. we passed no legislation. We did no new programs. To me, it's, it's unfortunate that there may be a special session, but it's not going to go anywhere. Bill? You, you know, uh, this might shock some people, but I'm going to agree with Michael in, in, on, in a number of areas. One, we do need universal background checks. I think the technology mm -hmm. is there to do it. It's pretty easy. If I can swipe my credit card off my phone, I can easily look into this kind of stuff. <clears throat> I think <clears throat> that's, a, that's an issue that we should deal with and move forward on. Um, it, it, but there isn't. Look. If, uh, and this is, uh, I want to be clear when I say this, if the guy had screamed Allah Akbar uh, in either one of these uh, uh, occasions, we would have, we have a whole segment of the government devoted to stopping tactically this kind of thing. And until we are willing as a nation to devote both treasure and time and effort to stopping this, and I'm not talking just about banning some inanimate object, I'm talking about getting into the multi-layered approach here. I mean, the people who commit these crimes all do fit a pattern. They're mm -hmm. all white, they're all male, they're all disenfranchised, they all have some sort of ax to grind, they're all engaged in this kind of thing. And until we really want to deal with it as a nation, it's a multi-layered approach that it's going to take. It's about mental health. It's about monitoring a lot of these sites. That's what we don't want to talk about because we do live in an incredibly free society. Mm -hmm. We don't want to retard that. But there, there, are, there are some things that we can do because tactically speaking, the difference between what happened in El Paso and what happens with international terrorism and somebody doing this kind of thing is not very far off. And we've gotten pretty good at stopping this over here. So um, I, I think the opportunity is there. It's just a matter of Michael said, yeah. we have the will to do it. Yeah, and again, this is funny. We're, Bill and I are, are in agreement. Uh, the, yeah. you know, the, the, we don't know yet exactly what happened in Dayton, but we do know that the El Paso, that was an act right. of terrorism, yeah. and it's time to call it what it yeah. is. We have about 30 seconds. I want to quickly get to the next Democratic debate next month. Only eight are qualifying. Mm -hmm. um, we have pretty much the standout here. What do you think about the list? Oh, I, I, I'm glad that they're, I'm glad and I'm, I'm sad about the list because it, it's time to, to call the herd. You I mean, need, quite you don't need on 20 there. people on the stage. Unfortunately, some of the good candidates, some governors of states or some U.S. senators may not even make the list, but that's just presidential politics. It is time. O only about, okay. about six of them have realistic shots, so we don't need to hear from everybody. Is there a way that we could do this where you get like the major leagues and then the minor league people appear on a different night? Because mm -hmm. it, is, it is comical to watch two groups of 10 try to debate over the period of time. And CNN, by the way, is to blame for this because they've turned it into infotainment. They try to pit the candidates against one another. No clear, real mm -hmm. direction given. So you can lay a lot of the blame at CNN's feet, I think. All right, we're just going to have to wait and see. Guys, thanks so much for joining mm -hmm. us for uh, Monday's Political Plays.